Good day. We're coming on the air with breaking news near San Francisco, where President Biden is sitting down for a high-stakes meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping. This will be their first meeting in over a year. Since then, tensions have risen dramatically between the two countries. The U.S. shot down a Chinese spy balloon. The Chinese military has made aggressive maneuvers toward American military aircraft and ships. And there have been sharp disagreements over Taiwan. Also in the backdrop, the wars in both Israel and Ukraine, two major U.S. allies with huge implications for democracy abroad. You see, moments ago, uh, the two leaders uh, going into the building where they, uh, they will have this meeting. Let's go to Chief White House Correspondent Peter Alexander, who's traveling with the president. Uh, give us the lay of the land there, Peter, if you will. Lester, we've really seen what is one of the world's most consequential relationships devolve in the course of the last year. You noted the backdrop to this visit today. It's been uh, it really in a downward spiral. And the president's priority, as much as any other today, is really to try to stabilize that relationship as the two men meet today. President Biden will be joined by some of his top advisors, the Secretary of State, the Treasury Secretary, his climate envoy, John Kerry, among those expected to be in the room Today, the president expected to press President Xi on a series of issues, as you noted, the close ties China has with both, both Iran and Russia right now, that combative approach towards Taiwan, and of course, uh, the theft of technology and hacking and trade. We are told by White House officials not to expect any major breakthroughs in this conversation, really just to lower the temperature in many ways. But there is one key takeaway that we're going to be watching for today, Lester, the possibility that these two agree to military, military communications. Once again, there has been a collapse in those talks in the last year. Another thing we'll be watching, of course, is on the issue of fentanyl, the opioid crisis, where it's possible that the two announce a joint working group of some kind that they will come together to try to combat the illegal flow of the ingredients used to produce fentanyl uh, from China. Lester. All right, Peter, thank you. Again, the uh, two leaders have gone into the meeting room. The uh, cameras should be coming up shortly. Uh, we'll see them in there uh, in what essentially is a photo opportunity. However, uh, each may take the opportunity to say something we don't know. We'll continue to watch and bring that picture up as soon as they switch it on. Also, their foreign correspondent Janice Mackey Freyer, who covers China for NBC News. Janice, give us an idea of the domestic pressures that President Xi faces as he makes this appearance in the U.S. Well, Xi Jinping is coming at a time when China's economy is slowing down and showing some cracks. Uh, youth unemployment is at such a high that the government has simply stopped reporting num numbers altogether. Uh, there are concerns about the business environment, foreign investment turning negative for the first time since records have been kept, uh, property crisis, local government debt, the list goes on. Uh, Xi Jinping is overseeing an economy that is in the midst of a transformation, but he does not want to be the steward of an economy uh, that is in decline. And that's pretty much the driving force uh, that has brought him here. Uh, he is looking for some relief from the Biden administration on tech export controls, looking for relief on tariffs and trying to lower the temperature, as Peter said, between the two sides. This for Xi Jinping and for China is also about image. Uh, all of the uh, visuals of Xi being uh, welcomed with this grand arrival, every detail being choreographed. This is all being beamed back by state media, getting full coverage in the newspapers, on television and on social media, giving the impression, showing the images that their president is the guest of the United States of America. He's been given this wonderful welcome and that they may have differing views, but they are still at least talking. Lester. All right, Janice, we'll ask you to stand by. Let's go back to Peter Alexander. Uh, Peter, pr President Biden under some pressure here as well in terms of his wish list and expectations. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, I think that's right, Lester. The president has received plenty of criticism, particularly from Republicans, as we see inside the room right now. We'll pause to take a listen to the president, if we can. As we wait to hear from President Biden, they're seated across from President Xi. Uh, obviously, one of the one of the biggest takeaways from many of the president's well, critics as it relates to China is I think the president the is, that you is can't speaking trust the Chinese. Now, I, I, I think we do hear him. Yeah, let's take a listen. Sorry. 
and to host you in the United States is a great honor and a pleasure, uh, particularly as it relates to our summit today. And for the APEC leaders meeting this week, look, this time of year, about a year and a day ago, we met in Bali on the sidelines of the G20. Since then, key members of our teams have had important discussions on issues matters to both our nations and to the world. But as always, there is no substitute to face-to-face -face discussions. I've always found our discussions straightforward and frank, and I've always appreciated them. Mr. President, we know each other for a long time. We haven't always agreed, which would not surprise anyone. But our meetings have always been candid, straightforward, and useful. I've never doubted what you've told me in terms of your candid nature in which you speak. I value our conversation because I think it's paramount that you and I understand each other clearly, leader to leader, with no misconceptions or miscommunication. We have to ensure that competition does not veer into conflict. And we also have to manage it responsibly, that competition. That's what the United States want and what we intend to do. We also, I also believe that's what the world wants for both of us, candid exchange. We also have a responsibility to our people and the work in the world uh, to work together when we see it in our interest to do so. And a critical global challenge we face from climate change to counter narcotics to artificial intelligence demand our joint efforts. So I look forward to beginning this discussion, and I welcome you, and the floor is yours, Mr. President. And again, welcome back. Mr. President, good morning. Coming here, I thought of, I think of your trip to China when I was the vice president of China. We had a meeting. It was 12 years ago. I still remember our interactions very vividly. And it always gives me a lot of thoughts. Last time we met in Bali, you said it was a year and a day ago. A lot has happened since then. The world has emerged from the COVID pandemic, but is still under its tremendous impacts. The global economy is recovering, but its momentum remains sluggish. Industrial and supply chains are still under the threat of interruption, and protectionism is rising. All these are grave problems. The China-U.S. relationship, which is the most important bilateral relationship in the world, should be perceived and envisioned in a broad context of the, of the accelerating global transformations unseen in a century. It should develop in a way that benefits our two peoples and fulfills our responsibility for human progress. China-U.S. relationship has never been smooth sailing over the past 50 years or more, and it always faces problems of one kind or another. Yet it has kept moving forward amid twists and turns. For two large countries like China and the United States, turning their back on each other is not an option. It is unrealistic for one side to remodel the other, and conflict and confrontation has unbearable consequences for both sides. I'm still of the view that major country competition is not the prevailing trend of current times and cannot solve the problems facing China and the United States or the world at large. Planet Earth is big enough for the two countries to succeed, and one country's success is an opportunity for the other. It is an objective fact that China and the United States are different in history, culture, social system and development path. However, as long as they respect each other, coexist in peace and pursue win-win cooperation, they will be fully capable of rising above differences and find the right way for the two major countries to get along with each other. I firmly believe in the promising future of the bilateral relationship. Mr. President, you and I, we are at the helm of China-U.S. relations. 
We shoulder heavy responsibilities for the two peoples, for the world, and for history. I look forward to having an in-depth exchange of views and reach new, reach new understandings with you on strategic and overarching issues critical to the direction of China-U.S. relations and on major issues affecting world peace and development. I wish to thank you for your thoughtful arrangements for our meeting today and for our participation at the APEC meeting. Thank you. A few questions, as you can hear, being uh, offered to the two presidents. We're going to listen just for a second to see if the president responds. Yeah, we're walking out. Everyone's walking out. Thank you so much. Everyone's got to head out. Everyone's got to head out. Everyone's heading out. Everyone's heading out. Everyone's heading out. Everyone's heading out. It sounds like no, um, but we'll continue to listen. Uh, what we just heard, the uh, president of China, President Biden as well, uh, about to sit down for some serious meetings here, but not before striking what sounded at least initially non-confrontational, rather warm-toned as they made their official greetings, uh, pr President Biden noting that there is great value in face-to-face -face conversation, uh, pr President Xi offering a very similar uh, assessment, say turning back our backs on each other is not realistic. Again, setting the tone for the meetings to come over some very serious sticking points that have divided these two countries. Chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander, uh, again, traveling with the president, joins us. Uh, uh, Peter, do we know how long they'll meet, how deep they will go, whether this is a setup for a, a, a later meeting? Uh, let us know. Yeah, Lester, in fact, we will hear from President Biden a little bit later this afternoon. He's going to hold a news conference with the reporters, including myself, who were assembled here. That's our first opportunity to learn what, if anything, became of this visit today. I do anticipate, as White House aides have suggested, that it could be a matter of hours, certainly with translation, that the two are behind closed doors alongside their top advisors today. I was struck in that conversation by the warmth of the tone, but also the acknowledgement from President Xi saying that there have been twists and turns in this relationship, an understatement to say the least. But he said that the planet is big enough for both countries and that one country's success does not need to come at the expense of the other. President Biden saying among his priorities is to make sure that this relationship remains a competition and does not veer into conflict here. But, you know, despite the warm language that the two men shared in that brief visit that we saw on camera, there are some real tough issues that they will need to discuss here. Among those, a point that Christopher Wray, the FBI director himself, made before Congress earlier today, that China is responsible for more hacking, more theft of intellectual property than any country in the world. He said more than every other country combined. So there are so many issues as it relates to the wars in the Middle East and Russia, obviously, to the theft of technology and the topic of trade, all of them on the agenda as they sit down and begin this a visit in uh, formal terms as we speak. Lester. Peter Alexander. Peter, thank you for that. That concludes this NBC News special report. We'll have much more ahead on our streaming network, NBC News Now, online at NBCNews.com and tonight on NBC Nightly News. I'm Lester Holt. Thank you for watching, everyone. Good day. Ready? Close. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.